Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'll be testing out the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 tablet computer or whatever you might want to call it. I will test this out for photo editing and for video editing. So I will try and use Photoshop and Lightroom and DaVinci Resolve 17 for the videos because this comes with a Windows 10, full Windows 10 user interface or um, operating system, which is really cool. This is the i5 version, not the i7. So the Intel Core i5 with eight gigabytes of RAM and 125 gigabytes of memory. The reason why I bought this kind of lighter version, not the heavy duty version, is because I limited myself with a thousand euro spending and I got the tablet plus the keyboard uh, for 910 euros, I should have gotten a pen as well with that. So pen would be much easier to work with than with the with the finger pad. The keyboard is uh, it attaches and detaches. So basically, you can have like a like a tablet. Um, some people rotate this. Not really a rotating. Okay, did it? Ha! <laughs> yeah, and it didn't fall. But the cool thing is that the keyboard attaches with magnets and you can just take it on and off and it's right over there, which is really cool. So I'm just showing off, I don't know. Mostly what I'm interested in is how well you can edit photos on this because this is primarily why I bought it for photo editing and if I can do a rudimentary, very simple video edit on this, it's a gold mine. So let's try it out. And before we get started, the device has two ports. Now this is not a full review of the device, but it's very important to, to tell you that the device has only two ports. So the USB-A and the USB-C port, which you can see right over here. The cool thing about this is that you have the USB-C. The bad thing is that you only have one USB-A. So if I attach my DaVinci Resolve license dongle key into the USB-A port, well, that means that I cannot attach my external drive, which also uses the USB-A. Another cool thing about the device is, however, that it comes with a micro SD slot right over here. So you can attach a micro SD card in this and you have additional storage. So most of the work which I will be doing on this device will be through this, unless the memory card fails and I will be a very sad person. Okay, let's start testing this thing out. Now, before we get started, I have to mention that I had to change the resolution of this device because this comes at a ridiculously high resolution and it's really hard to read or to work with those teeny tiny dials in your software because it's a small screen with a very high resolution. So the original one uh, is like this much, which is really high and everything by default is set to 200. Uh, a percent of scaling. Now this is cool because it makes everything appear um, large and high res, but on in Photoshop or in Lightroom or most importantly in DaVinci Resolve, everything becomes really, really small because that scaling doesn't really work there. So this is the reason why I have it set to 1440p. This is the same resolution as I'm outputting this video and it's really cool because I can set it to a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So this resolution, because this one, the original one, is a three by two, which means that I would have kind of black bars if I was to sh um, show you the screen recording. And I can set this to 150% just to make it appear okay. Now, of course, the screen is a little bit narrow and I'm using this just because I'm screen recording, which also slows down the whole thing a little bit more. So let's start with Lightroom first. So Lightroom is opening up. It's pretty much the same speed, I would say, as on my PC or on my laptop. So it's, it's slow, all Adobe um, apps are really slow. So this one is slow as well here. Uh, it's not slower, it's not faster, it's about the same thing. Okay, so let's take a look at this 20 megapixel file, a raw file from my Lumix G9. Uh, this was shot at the zoo, don't worry, I'm not a wildlife photographer. Uh, but it's a cool photo and it's, it, it's 20 megapixels. So if you guys work with 30 megapixels or 40 or 50, it might be a little slower than what you're gonna see right here. So let's just do kind of a simple um, slider change movement and see how this responds. I am using the touchpad on the, on the keyboard, which is really kind of bad. I think I can go with the finger. Oh yeah, um, I can go with the finger, which is really cool, but it's teeny tiny, so everything is really small and kind of hard to hit. So shadows, highlights, this pretty much works, you know, the response, if I just shift the exposure back and forth, well, it's, I would say almost exactly the same as on my workhorse laptop. So yeah, definitely usable for photo editing. Let's switch to Photoshop right now edit in Photoshop. 
see how long that will work. Now Photoshop is notoriously slow on, on for opening on any device. Here it's actually quite fast, I'm kind of surprised. And there we go. Okay, so this is now imported to Photoshop. Uh, let's see what we can do. So I think kind of the hardest thing on in Photoshop is working with smart objects. So I will convert this to a smart object and add a couple of filters and try to change them and see how this works. One filter that's really, really slow is the zoom filter, which I use the blur zoom filter, which I use to add light rays usually uh, in my photos. So this is, this is now converted quite fast. Filter blur and let's go to the radial blur. Now I'm gonna set this to good quality to zoom effect and 100%. You guys probably seen this in, in my photo edit, so I'm just gonna place this over here. Press OK and see how long this works. Ah, okay, it's quite fast. And since this is a um, smart object, I can go back and you know change this a little bit more, put it here, and let's switch it to best. This is where the fun starts. So I'm not jump cutting this. You're actually seeing this um, live as to how long it takes and. Personally, from experience, I would have to say maybe, maybe, maybe 10% slower or 5% slower than what I'm used to seeing on, on my laptop. So this is not a scientific test, but it, it's just my personal experience. And I think this is completely usable for photo editing. So if I then rasterize this layer back, yeah, it's kind of instant. So, you know, this is not a photo edit, like a full-on photo edit. It's just the test of the processing power. If you guys, you know, use a lot of layers, a lot of filters, then things will slow down, but because probably of the lack of memory, but I think for a very kind of simple photo edit on the fly, this is completely usable. Okay, let's try now the DaVinci Resolve video editing. Oh, definitely not saving this. Okay, DaVinci Resolve, I have my license plugin dongle plugged into the only USB-A port right here. Uh, and let's see how long this takes to open. DaVinci Resolve 17 has really improved uh, with the version 1. Point something. Uh, so the opening times is really, really, uh, or really, really slow or fast, you know, quick. Okay, I have a project already set here uh, and I'm just going to import basically two files. I've also made optimized media for everything just to save the time for this uh, video review. But if I turn off the optimized media, then I will see the actual files being playback. If you guys don't know what I'm really talking about, optimized media is basically transcoding your video file into a file that has every frame uh, rendered out. So the software doesn't need to extrapolate each frame from just a couple of frames and from the encoding or decoding process, it actually shows every frame. So it's very easy for the software to show each and every frame. So if you have 25 frames in one second, in this file you have each, so 25 frames stored in the container. Otherwise you maybe only have two or three and everything in between is encoded. So the, the software needs to, or the computer needs to decode everything and find each individual file. This is why usually, on slow computers, you have to use a proxy files or optimized media. So let's test this thing out on a full HD 8-bit file and on a 4K 10-bit file and see the comparison as to how this works. I have, as I said before, the optimized media turned off and I don't use proxy files, so I only use optimized media. So I have two clips here. One is the full HD 8-bit and the other one is the 4K 10-bit, so hard on your computer. So let's see first the slow motion file in playback, so this is full HD, 8-bit. It's slow because it's a slow motion file, but if I'm scrubbing through the timeline, this I think is completely usable and workable. So full HD, 8-bit, so regular recordings, which you can do with your cell phone or with your camera if you don't have 10-bit uh, internal recording, is completely usable. Now let's go to the 4K 10-bit. Haha, <laughs> this one's gonna be a little bit more fun. Now scrubbing through this file, you can see it's I have to stop and then the computer needs to extrapolate each frame, uh, which really slows everything down. So if I play back this, yeah, it's completely not usable. So let's turn on the optimized media. Uh, and I have to say that for these files, I don't know how many files there were, it's about maybe 
20 minutes of recording altogether. Uh, it took about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes to process, so to re-render everything uh, in optimized media in half resolution and in interframe, so all frames are, are being stored in the file. So this is now optimized media. You now this, this plays back, I mean, if, if I'm scrubbing through the file, this is pretty much, oh, you know, it's like the full HD version. And if I play back, um, there is a little bit of stutter. Yeah, so for playback, hmm, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe storing it in maybe one quarter resolution if you have 4K files would probably work a little bit better. But for, for editing, for just scrubbing through, you know, I think this is completely usable. So I wasn't expecting a miracle from this laptop and I definitely think I will be using this for some really fast uh, video assembly, timeline assembly, and then do the final rendering and the effects on my workstation. Uh, no, just export everything and import there and finish the job. So this whole video was edited, rendered and exported on the Microsoft Surface Pro 7. It was a little bit of work, it was a little bit of a waiting game, but it's definitely usable. Now, not for everyday video editing, but if, you, if you're if really somewhere and you have to do the job, this can do the job for you. So for photo editing, definitely usable. For video editing, it's kind of a last resort, but it's possible. So these are my experience with the Microsoft Surface Pro 7. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. Also, maybe consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you're new. My name is Miro and I usually take you out on photo shoots and show you these kind of things. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.